now is Julia Himrich. She's a research fellow at the European Leadership Network, focusing on NATO-EU defence collaboration. Thanks ever so much for, for coming in. So, President Erdogan, he, he, he's meeting for the, these EU leaders for the first time since the, the referendum. What's top of his agenda? Well, it's obviously a tense meeting for many reasons. Um, they have been very careful in keeping actually Turkey off the agenda at the moment um, because there are just too many things um, happening in terms of the political divisions in Europe on how to deal with Turkey and also um, yeah, because we need to see where Erdogan is now going when it comes to this relationship with the EU. So his, on top of his agenda, is really, I would say, to uh, try to have some kind of collaborative relationship still with Europe. NATO is really the key to that, because things are going not that well when it comes to the EU. I think a focus on NATO and emphasizing basically that Turkey is an important NATO ally will be his best card to play at this summit. You mentioned it yourself, that tension between the European Union and Turkey. How's that going to affect NATO? Yeah, well, we've seen it happening actually just in the past week when, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, when it came to Austria, for example, um, Erdogan has been, uh, Turkey has been very keen on um, basically punishing Austria in a way because uh, Austria has highlighted that they would actually like to stop any kind of accession talks with Turkey because of the um, de political developments in Turkey. So we've clearly seen a spillover effect from what's happening with the EU into the NATO relationship. And... Um, yeah, it, it will be uh, one that will unfold, I think, over the next um, over the next few months again. We do have, in theory, uh, a very close relationship, relationship between EU and NATO after the joint declaration from last year. Um, basically, EU and NATO had committed to collaborate more, but because, and these things are possible, but because of political divisions, it's not quite clear to what extent we can keep up the political momentum there. So where do you see the, the future of NATO? Uh, is it going to be this international force for good against terrorism, or are there too many splits? Does Trump think it's still too much about America? Well, I think it's going to be, uh, it's difficult to predict right now. I mean, um, as you, if we, we've just seen um, Trump has clearly um, not lived up to the expectations of his European partners of where they would like to see um, NATO going. Um, European partner allies have clearly committed to um, support the coalition against ISIS. And um, again, that is also an important factor because, yes, there is this coalition against ISIS, but what does that actually mean? I mean, Turkey has a very different approach to that, for example, than the U.S. or some of the um, European allies. So I I think there's a lot of soul searching going on at the moment when it comes to NATO. Obviously, from the officials in NATO, what they were hoping was a very clear commitment to this alliance, a very clear commitment to Article 5, especially because so many allies have committed to spending 2% and, and have started to spend more. However, I think it's difficult to predict uh, how Trump is going to um, treat this alliance. Clearly, it's more of a zero-sum game for him than actually thinking they're about it. They're spending more, but they're not spending their 2%. But let's talk about that collaboration uh, against IS. What could it mean? Well, um, so far we've seen that NATO is... Um, willing to expand, expand its uh, use of AWACS um, radar planes, for example, and uh, willing to share more intelligence. Um, these are obviously things that NATO has done to some extent already, so to expand that. So it's not going to be a revolutionary change of what NATO does. We've also seen the German Chancellor Merkel emphasize to the media that this does not mean that Germany, for example, would contribute more militarily through NATO because they're already part of the coalition. So it's basically, it's, I think it's quite a big political statement um, and because some European um, allies were hesitant about committing NATO to join the alliance because they just don't like mm. the image of NATO active in the Middle East. They think it's a branding issue to a large extent as well, right? Uh, so, yeah. so a branding issue, a political statement, but yeah. baby steps in terms of where NATO is going to go. Okay. Julia, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.